सर रिकॉर्डिंग स्टार्टेड वी आर लाइव नाउ हरिओम हरिओम नमस्ते टू ऑल प्रोस्ट्रेटिंग एट द लोटस स्पीड ऑफ ब्रह्मनिष्ट सद्गुरु स्वामी विराजेश्वर सरस्वती एंड द एंटायर गुरु परंपरा ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ ऑल ऑफ अस टुडेस डिस्कोर्स एंड विवेक चूडामणि विल कंटिन्यू लास्ट टाइम वी हैड स्टॉप्ड एट द Shloka number two eighty six, verse number two eighty six, that is, Acharya Shankara Bhagavat Pada is explaining on the sub chapter called Adhyasa, false identification, how how the disciple should always think and then concentrate and then give up the false identification or Adhyasa, and he continues with a set of shlokas. on the same line of argument the sadguru explaining to his shishya last time acharya shankara bhagavat pad had taken the example of the body itself which is full of sweat urine and then fecal matter covered by covered by the bones and the connective tissues the muscles muscle layers and outermost skin and then what we see is the outer surface outer view of the human body but what is inside is as if baggage of fecal matter so he was giving that example last malamam savayam vapuhu tyaktva brahmi bhuya kruti bhava that is where we had stopped now he continues now in the next shloka acharya takes up here the famous vedantic example all mahatmans always they have used this example and acharya has specifically has used this example in most of his bhashyas here and there that is the ghatakasha and mahakasha mundina shlokadalli acharyaru ghatakasha mahakasha de bagge helta adara ondu ತುಲನೆಯನ್ನು ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಘಟಾಕಾಶ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಚಿಕ್ಕ ಪರಿಮಾಣದಲ್ಲಿ ಒಂದು ಗಡಿಗೆ ಅಥವಾ ಮಡಿಕೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಇರತಕ್ಕಂತಹ ಜಾಗ ಅವಕಾಶ ಅಥವಾ ಆಕಾಶ ಖಾಲಿ ಜಾಗ ಮಠಾಕಾಶ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಸುತ್ತಲು ಅಂತರಿಕ್ಷದಲ್ಲಿ ಆಕಾಶದಲ್ಲಿ ತುಂಬಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂತಹ ಈ ಅವಕಾಶ ಅಥವಾ ಈ ಆಕಾಶ ಅಥವಾ ಈ ಜಾಗ ಮಠಾಕಾಶ ಅತ್ಯಂತ ವಿಶಾಲವಾದದ್ದು ಘಟಾಕಾಶ ಅದೇ ಆಕಾಶ ಒಂದು ಮಡಿಕೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಸಂಕುಚಿತವಾಗಿರುತ್ತೆ ಅದರ ಪ್ರಮಾಣ ಕಡಿಮೆ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಗಡಿಗೆ ಒಳಗಿನ ಖಾಲಿ ಜಾಗ ಗಡಿಗೆ ಇರೋ ತನಕ ಕಾಣುತ್ತಲ್ವ ಗಡಿಗೆಯನ್ನು ಒಡೆದ ಹಾಕಿದ ಮೇಲೆ ಒಳಗಡೆ ಇರತಕ್ಕಂಥ ಖಾಲಿ ಜಾಗ ಎಲ್ಲಿ ಹೋಯಿತು ನಮ್ಗೆ ಕಾಣಲ್ವೇ ಸಾಮಾನ್ಯವಾಗಿ ಹೇಳಬೇಕು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಅದು ಮಹಾಕಾಶದ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ಸೇರಿ ಹೋಯಿತು ಐಕ್ಯವಾಯಿತು ಆ ಉದಾಹರಣೆ ಘಟಾಕಾಶ ಮಹಾಕಾಶ ಇವಾತ್ಮನ ಪರಾತ್ಮನಿ ವಿಲಾಪ್ಯ ಅಖಂಡ ಭಾವೇನ ತೋಷ್ಣೀಂ ಭವ ಸದಾ ಮುನೆ ಘಟಾಕಾಶ ಮಹಾಕಾಶ ಇವಾತ್ಮನ ಪರಾತ್ಮನಿ ವಿಲಾಪ್ಯ ಅಖಂಡ ಭಾವೇನ ತೋಷ್ಣೀಂ ಭವ ಸದಾ ಮುನೆ ಕೀ ಫ್ರೇಸ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಈಸ್ ತೋಷ್ಣೀಂ ಭವ ಸದಾ ಏ ಮುನೆ ಸದಾ ತೋಷ್ಣೀಂ ಭವ ತೋಷ್ಣೀಂ ಲಿಟ್ರಲ್ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಯು ಮೈ ಡಿಯರ್ ಡಿಸೈಪಲ್ ವತ್ಸ ಯು ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ರಿಮೀನ್ ಸೈಲೆಂಟ್ ತೋಷ್ಣೀಂ ಭವ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಸದಾ ಕಾಲ ಮೌನವಾಗಿರು ಮೌನದಲ್ಲಿರು ಅಂತ ಅರ್ಥ ಗಡಿಗೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಇರತಕ್ಕಂತಹ ಆಕಾಶ ಅಥವಾ ಜಾಗ ಗಡಿಗೆ ಒಡೆದಾಗ ಯಾವ ರೀತಿ ಸುತ್ತಲೂ ಇರತಕ್ಕಂತ ನಮ್ಮ ಸುತ್ತಲು ಇರತಕ್ಕಂತಹ ಅಂತರಿಕ್ಷದ ಆಕಾಶದ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ಒಂದಾಗಿ ಸೇರಿ ಹೋಗುತ್ತದೆಯೋ ಅದೇ ರೀತಿ ಅದೇ ರೀತಿ ನೋಡಪ್ಪ ಶಿಷ್ಯ 
ನಿನ್ನ ಜೀವಾತ್ಮನನ್ನ ಈ ಜೀವವನ್ನ ಏನ್ ನೀನ್ ನಾನು ಅಂತ ದೇಹ ಅಂತಃಕರಣ ಯುಕ್ತವಾದ ಈ ಜೀವವನ್ನ ನಾನು ನಾನು ಅಂತ ಇದೆಯಲ್ಲ ಈ ಜೀವವನ್ನ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮನಲ್ಲಿ ನಿನ್ನ ಒಳಗಡೆನೆ ಇರ್ತಕ್ಕಂತಹ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ಪ್ರತ್ಯೇಕಾತ್ಮ ಆತನಲ್ಲಿ ವಿಲಯ ಮಾಡ್ಬಿಡು ಆತನಲ್ಲಿ ಐಕ್ಯ ಮಾಡ್ಬಿಡು ನೀನ ಬೇರೆ ಅಲ್ಲ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಜೀವ ಬೇರೆ ಅಲ್ಲ ಜೀವಾತ್ಮ ಬೇರೆ ಅಲ್ಲ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ಬೇರೆ ಅಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಭಾವ ಹಾಗೆ ಐಕ್ಯ ಮಾಡಿ ಐಕ್ಯ ಮಾಡಿಕೊಂಡು ಅಖಂಡ ಭಾವೇನ ತೂಷ್ಣೀಂ ಭವ ಸದಾ ಸದಾ ಕಾಲ ಮೌನದಲ್ಲಿ ಇರು ಅಂತ ಮೇಲ್ ಮಟ್ಟದ ಅರ್ಥ ಶಿವಾಡ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಸೇಸಿಯರ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಸೈಡ್ ದ ಪಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಎ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸಿಕ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಇನ್ ವೇದಾಂತ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ದ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ಇನ್ ಸೈಡ್ ದ ಸ್ಪಾಟ್ ಪಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೋ ಲಿಮಿಟೆಡ್ ಕಾಂಪ್ಯಾಕ್ಟ್ ವೇರ್ ಎಸ್ ದ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ಔಟ್ಸೈಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಆಕಾಶ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಎಂಟೈರ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ surrounding us around that is vast infinite incalculable you can't even imagine so just like when the pot is broken and the space within the pot akash merges automatically with the mahakash space outside you can't identify where is the space of the pot mixed up in the outer space no identification no identification it is something like elsewhere ashare has given another example for the same thing, to understand to make us to know correct see for example take the holy river in our country ganga ganga maiya ganga mata from the origin point of view from gomukh and gangotri onwards it is called the holy river ganga flowing and flowing and flowing downwards from rishikesh and haridwar downwards and downwards and then into uttar pradesh all the while all the while passing through so many holy places and then touching uh, kashi also patna also and then finally it merges with bay of bengal near ganga sagar area oh the main river of course joins with the brahmaputra river now within the bangladesh and joins the bay of bengal now as long as it is flowing individually on the earth surface you identify as ganga ma ganga maiya ganga ma ganga river the holy river you the name is identified you can see the river flowing once it merges with the sea water in that mouth region you go and stand take out a, a pot full of sea water there and try to identify where is the ganga water here you can't identify the ganga has already merged with the sea it has become the sea water itself just like that when the pot is broken the ghatakasha merges with mahakasha outer space it loses the individuality as long as the pot is there you call it as the space within the pot once the pot is gone when the, it is smashed then it loses the identity space mixes joins totally merges these are all words for communication actually there is no difference at all between the space inside the pot and the space surrounding the pot or outside the pot so one and the same for our sake we call different names that's what i get ಘಟಾಕಾಶಂ ಮಹಾಕಾಶ ಇವ ಆತ್ಮನ ಪರಾತ್ಮನಿ ವಿಲಾಪ್ಯ ಸೊ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ಇವರ್ ಓನ್ ಜೀವಾತ್ಮ ಇವರ್ ಜೀವಭಾವ ವಿತ್ ಅಂತಃಕರಣ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಸೋ ಅಂಡ್ ಸೋ ಯು ಹ್ ಐಡೆಂಟಿಫೈಡ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಬಾಡಿ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಕಾಂಪ್ಲೆಕ್ಸ್ ರಿಮೂವ್ ದಟ್ ಫೀಲಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಯು ಟೋಟಲಿ ಮರ್ಜ್ ಯುವರ್ ಜೀವ ಇನ್ ಟು ದ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ಇಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಅಖಂಡ ಭಾವೇನ ತೂಷ್ಣೀಂ ಭವ ಸದಾ so once you can reach that stage of merging yourself in paramatma pratyagat once you are totally totally by the grace of guru or god come out of the false identification adhyasa that you are the body and then you completely <coughs> merge with the pratyagatma inside and you become paramatma itself then what happens 
Acharya says, once you do it, then Toshnim Bhava Sada Mune. Then you remain silent. Toshnim means silence. Golden silence. Mahamauna. So once the Brahma Jnana, Atma Jnana dance, what happens? All the karmas will go away. The prapancha disappears in the spiritual sense. In the metaphysical sense. Please remember. The whole space, universe disappears. Why? Because the Atma Jnana Sampanna personality will see only Brahma. Only that Paramatma Vastu everywhere. The only Adishthana substratum as Paramatma. The entire universe is pervaded by the same supreme, supreme consciousness. The supreme reality the supreme awareness and he himself is that supreme awareness. So there is no second. There is only one all the time. So the prapancha in that sense disappears. The moment jnana dawns in. So Tushnim Bhava Acharya says here means remain silent. It happens of course. So for our understanding it is not just literally keeping quiet, not talking. It also means to that extent, don't talk. That means talk only when it is required essential. As far as maintaining your body in this world of mithya. The real sense, Tushnim Bhava, remain silent means, Acharya hints here, the insight is you have to remain without desire. You remain desireless. Desireless. All the time. That means remove the sankalpa and vikalpa. The thought processes. You control the mind. Your mind will be controlled by yourself and the thought processes what are generated will die as soon as they are generated because you become a pure witness. Once you become a witness, once you start watching the thoughts, the thoughts will subside and subside and disappear. So that actually means Tushnim Bhava. Real silence. Thoughtlessness nature. The thoughtlessness state. That is the bliss. The blissful ecstasy. All Jnani Mahatmans always revel in that. Always revel in Then he continues, the Acharya. Saprakasham adishthanam swayam bhoya sadatmana brahmandam api pindandam yajyatam malabhandavat. Now, Saprakasham adishthanam swayam bhoya sadatmana Brahmandam api pindandam yajat yajat yam malabhandavat. Again, Acharya is using the word malabhandavat. In the last shloka, he had used the word malamamsa vayam vapu. Malamamsa mayam vapu. Vapu means his body, sharira. Malamamsa mayam. He had used that word in the previous shlokas. Now he uses the word malabhandavat. Malabhandavat means look. My dear disciple, this body, this physical body, covered by the outermost skin, is nothing but Malabhandavat Shariram. It is a baggage full of fecal matter, urine and sweat. That is what Acharya is making so, again, clear, so that a sense of a dejection should come into the mind of the Qualified disciple. So that the disciple should not start all the time appreciating his own physical body, appreciating his own beauty, or dwelling too much on the maintenance of his own body. That is why Acharya is pinpointed, pinpointedly, subtly, directly using these words. 
स्वप्रकाशम अधिष्ठान स्वयं भूय सदात्मना ब्रह्मांडम अभी पिंडांडम यज्ञता मलभंडवर्तर आचार्य इले नोड़प शिष्य सत्स्वरूप चित्स्वरूपन आनंद स्वरूप सर्व आश्रय के कारण स्वयं प्रकाश वा ज्योतिष स्वरूप बेड़ता ब्रह्म पदार्थवे नीन सर तक निलो नि अनुभव बरता इडी विश्व यह ब्रह्मांड पिंड शरीर नि शरीर स्थूल सूक्ष्म जो गूडिता नि शरीर पिंडांड अंद्रे देह शरीर मनस्स बुद्धि अहंकार युक्त वाद अंतरण शरीर पिंडांड सलू का विश्व इत ब्रह्मांड आदि ब्रह्मांड पिंडांड मलमूत्र तुम पात्र बहुत सुंदर उदाहरण को सो आचार्य शेषिया स्वप्रकाशम अधिष्ठान स्वयं भूय सदात्म ब्रह्मांडमी पिंडांडम यज्ञता मलभांडव Look, my dear disciple. See, being yourself, knowing, experiencing firsthand with the awareness that you are the ever-existing Brahma Padartha, Param Brahma Vastu. You are that self-shining Param Brahma Vastu. You are that Sat Swaru. You are that supreme consciousness. You are that Parama Shaitanya Vastu. You are that Chit Swaru. You are that Ananda Swaru. You are eternally present, without birth and death, and you are eternally shining. So, knowing that, hence, give up this false identification that you are the body. Your body is nothing but baggage of full of baggage, full of fecal matter, urine. Always, always, always try to remember like that. Don't develop attachment, too much of love towards your own body. Okay, the body is there. You would prarabdha the body has come by birth. The body has to face all the good and bad things in the life as long as the life is there. So don't give too much of love and importance to this body because it is malabhanda. It is a baggage of fecal matter, baggage of urine, baggage of sweat. So. Detach yourself from Brahmanda, the cosmos, and pinned your own body. See, Brahmanda refers to the outer cosmos. Pinned refers to your inner cosmos. So both you discard, both you discard. Yajjatam, a sort of a injunction by Acharya. You discard because you are Brahma Swarupa. You are not the body. So. Mind here is every time Acharya. Why? Every time he comes back to the same point. See? You are not the body. You are Atma Swarupa. Why a jnani, a Mahatman, Sakshat, Shiva Swarupa, Shankar, Bhagavad Pada, all the time repeats, 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 without hesitation, without any an iota of fatigue. With so much patience, बाहर ताल में इंदा प्रति सला प्रति बारी के आचार इधन यह के पदे पदे हिरता इधर नोड़ पार नीनो आत्मसुरु नीनो देहा अल्ला शरीर अल्ला नीनो आत्मसुरु वही आचारी is hammering all the time concentrate on that point let your mind flow deep go inward for a moment close your eyes and think Why in these shlokas, Acharya repeatedly, repeatedly telling like this: You are not the body; you are the Atma Swarup. You are that Parabrahma Swarup. Your reality is different. You have mistaken, superimposed your body as yourself. Your outer I feeling that I am the doer. I am the karta. I am the bhoktra, a bhokta. So the kartrutva and bhoktrutva, you are imposing yourself falsely on your own psyche, which is totally false. Give up that feeling, adhyas. 
pulse diagram. Why repeatedly he says, if you start hammering the truth thousand times, ten thousand times, one million times, every day hammering the same truth to the disciple by the Sadguru, at least a day will come. A day will come, fortunately in this birth itself, by the grace of the Guru. A day will come that sudden enlightenment will occur, Jnanodaya will occur, the dawn of the Jnana will take place, the dawn of the reality will happen so that the disciple really wakes up from this so-called dream called samskara. So, that is the reason why all Mahatmas repeatedly, repeatedly, without fail, with all the patience, they go on advising the same thing, same thing, over and over and over and over again and again. <clears throat> you have, all of you, you have to pardon me. Today, while starting this discourse, the age factor may be, it slipped off. The Mangalacharana Shloka slipped off from my mind from my mouth. I once again apologize to my Gurudeva and to the entire Guru Parampara. I will repeat that and then we will continue. Om Shri Ganeshaya Namaha Om Maha Sarswatyai Namaha Tada Shiva Samarambham Sri Shankaracharya Madhyavam Asmadacharya Pariyantam Vande Guru Parampara Shruti Smruti Purana Malayam Karunalayam Namami Bhagavat Padam Shankaram Loka Shankaram Shankaram Shankarajaryam Tejavam Badarayam Sutra Vashya Kurdo Vande Bhagavanta Punaha Sarva Vedanta Siddhanta Gocharam Tamagocharam Govindam Paramanandam Sadgurum Pranadosyam Om Namo Bhagavate Virajeshwaraya Hari Om. <coughs> Acharya now again continues. Chidatmani Sadhanande Deha Rudha Aham Dhyam Niveshalinga Mutrujya Kevalo Bhava Sarvada Chidatmani Sadhanande Deha Rudha Aham diyam niveshyalinga mutsrujya evalo bhava sarvada. Not a pashishya. He shareer away nanunta, he buddhi shareer mele, not hogi diella. Ah, buddhi anna nino nityananda surupa, chidananda surupa nagir prakanta, mangalakara. In the Chidatmanali, Pratikatmanali, Nino, and in a Buddhina, Elegorosi Nino, I Dehuola, Stula Sheriruola, Sokshma Sheriruola, no Pava, Yava grown in the Manasalebato, Nino, Asanganagiru, Kevalo, Bava, Sarvada, Andre, Yava Kala the Lo, Nino, Asanga, Manasarinda, Yellavana Tiagamado, Sanga Raitanagi. Idu Bhava Acharya says here Chidatmani Sadanande Deha Rudham Adhi Am Dhiyam Deha Rudham Am Dhiyam Niveshya Linga Mutsrujya Kevalo Bhava Sadvata Key word in this joker Kevalo Bhava Sarvada Sarvada means all the time All the time all the time. Kevalo bhava. Kevalo bhava means all the time remain with detachment. Inside, mentally, total detachment. No association. Totally dissociate inside from everything because you are that Atma Swarup. Chidatmani sadanande deharudham aham dhiyam niveshya lingam utsrujya. So, you resting your thought of so-called I, I, 
I, I am the body. So this ahankara, this I attitude, your buddhi, your manas, everything huh? on the atma itself, on the pratigat, instead of resting your mind on the body and your your thoughts on body and the mind complex, remove that, concentrate, rest all your thoughts on the Atma itself. Then what happens? Then you must always remember that you are a Sangha. You are dissociated. You are no more Stula Sharira, physical body. Niveshya Lingam Utsrujya, the word he is using here. Actually. Lingam Utsrujya, Lingam means Linga Sharira. That is Sukshma Sharir, subtle body. Even you are not that. Utsrujya means give up. Give up. Bittu bido. Neenu Sukshma Sharir o Allah. Stula Sharir o Allah. Neenu Kevala Atma Sarobana Gitti. So the point here is Acharya is indicating to the Shishya all the time that Looking into all the previous instruction I have given you, always think, always have that feeling firm that you are no more the physical body. You are not even the sukshma, subtle body, like you are not even antakkarana, chatushtaya. You are not buddhi, intellect. You are not mind complex. You are not chitta and you are not Ahankara, ego, the I, I, I feeling, referring to the body and mind. So that outer I, you are not even that Ahankara. So always think like, I am not even any of these Antakkarana. I am not even these Indriyas. I am not even the Panchapranas traversing in the body. So I am beyond all these things. I am only Atma Swarupa. That is why he says, Linga Mutrujya, Kevalo Bhava Sarva. Always be dissociated. Dissociate yourself mentally. Please remember here to remain silent or to dissociate. Nishkriya and Mauna. To remain silent and to dissociate. Nishkriya means not in the literal sense because the body cannot stay without doing even a small iota of karma as long as the life is there in the body. Some karma has to be performed. Actions have to be performed. Even if you keep quiet, see involuntary actions, subtle actions are going on in the body like respiration, not under your control. Digestion, not under your control. Excretion, not under your control. They are all controlled by the parasympathetic nervous system. In other words, they are all involuntary actions in the body. When you gulp the food into the mouth, into the pharynx, into the gullet here, once it completely you gulp the food, what happens? Then the food passes down the esophagus and to the stomach and from stomach to the small intestine and the large intestine all by itself by the contraction, expansion, movement of the inner muscles of the wall of the either esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, we call it as in, in biology simply peristaltic movements. So that is not under your control. You can only gulp the food. Then the food passes through, not by your intent, by it, its own. We call it as involuntary. They are also karma function. You cannot control your heartbeat. Heart is beating as long as the life is there. It is a karma going on. So the point here is Toshneem Bhava remains silent. Kevalo Bhava remain without action, without association. Means Mentally, dissociate yourself from all the actions. Be a witness. Remain a witness. You are witnessing your own body. 
you are witnessing your own mind you are witnessing your own thoughts you are witnessing your own speech you are witnessing your own actions so once you become a pure witness that ultimately results in what acharya says first hand experience of what is meant by toshneem bhava to remain silent to remain actionless nishkriya this cannot be explained by words it has to be experienced it has to be experienced so jnana cannot be given by a sadguru to anybody else he can show the way whereas the disciple has to perform himself do the sadhana and then experience first hand himself what is jnana elsewhere acharya has given a beautiful example for this in vedanta <laughs> very simple example anybody can understand see for a person who is brought up from the childhood without even seeing without touching without tasting without experiencing the honey made from the honey bees and then you know in the, in the bee hive it is stored and then the people will pluck the bee hive and then collect the honey so a person who has not tasted honey now the other person however much he tries to tell him look there is a sweet syrup called honey have you tasted do you know the other person says no neither he has seen nor he has heard about it nor he has a tasted so this person goes on ex- trying to explain look honey honey is a very very sticky fluid sticky watery type fluid it is a something like reddish brown orange brown yellow brown golden brown in color it is so tasteful so sweet when you gulp it in the mouth you feel so elated you feel so happy you feel like eating more and more spoonful of honey the taste is fantastic so all the explanation the person goes on goes on goes on even the other person who has not even seen and tasted honey can never understand what the other person is talking in front of ಜೇನು ತುಪ್ಪವನ್ನೇ ನೋಡದೆ ಅದರ ಸವಿಯನ್ನ ನೋಡದೆ ಇರತಕ್ಕಂಥವನಿಗೆ ಜೇನು ತುಪ್ಪದ ಸವಿಯ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಎಷ್ಟೇ ವಿವರಣೆ ಕೊಟ್ಟರು ಆತನಿಗೆ ಅರ್ಥ ಆಗೋದಿಲ್ಲ ಓನ್ಲಿ ವೆನ್ ದ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಟೇಸ್ ಎ ಸ್ಪೂನ್ ಫುಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ಯೂರ್ ಹನಿ ದೆನ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಹನಿ ಈಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ದ ಸ್ವೀಟ್ನೆಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಹನಿ ಈಸ್ ದೆನ್ ಯು ವಿಲ್ ರಿಯಲಿ ಫೀಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸೈಟೆಡ್ ಎಲೈಟೆಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವೆರಿ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಜ್ಞಾನ ಸಲ್ವೇಶನ್ enlightenment it cannot be explained the guru can show the way as a margadarshi as a guide he will lead he will lead you to the path of perfection and it is left to the shishya the disciple to have total faith and surrender at the lotus feet of the guru and continue the sadhana without fail without fail with utter humility adhering to the instructions of the guru fully trusting the words of the guru advice of the guru sadguru then the sadhana will culminate and he will have a first hand experience of his own reality swaswarupa again by the grace of the guru by the grace of almighty now acharya comes to the next one ಯತ್ರೈಷ ಜಗದಾಭಾಸೋ ತರ್ಪಣಾಂತಃಪುರಂ ಯಥಾ ತದ್ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾಹಂ ಇತಿ ಜ್ಞಾತ್ವಾ ಕೃತಕೃತ್ಯೋ ಭವಿಷ್ಯಸಿ ಯತ್ರೈಷ ಜಗದಾಭಾಸೋ ತರ್ಪಣಾಂತಃಪುರಂ ಯಥಾ ತದ್ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾಹಂ ಇತಿ ಜ್ಞಾತ್ವಾ ಕೃತಕೃತ್ಯೋ ಭವಿಷ್ಯಸಿ ಎತ್ರೈವ ಜಗದಾಭಾಸೋ ದರ್ಪಣಾಂತಃಪುರಂ ಯಥಾ ಆಚಾರ್ಯರು ಉದಾಹರಣೆ ಕೊಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ 
ನೀವು ಕನ್ನಡಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಯಾವ್ದಾದ್ರು ಒಂದು ವಸ್ತುವನ್ನು ನೋಡಿದರೆ ಕನ್ನಡಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ತರ್ಪಣ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಕನ್ನಡಿ ತರ್ಪಣಾಂತ ಪುರಂ ಯಥ ತರ್ಪಣಾಂತ ಪುರಂ ಯಥ ಒಂದು ಕನ್ನಡಿನಲ್ಲಿ ದೊಡ್ಡ ಚಿತ್ರವನ್ನು ನೋಡ್ಬಿಟ್ರೆ ನೀವು ಒಂದು ಅರಮನೆಯನ್ನು ಅಥವಾ ಬೇರೆ ಬೇರೆ ಕಟ್ಟಡಗಳು ಒಂದು ಊರಿಂದ ದೂರದ ದೊಡ್ಡ ಕನ್ನಡಿಲ್ಲ ಚಿತ್ರ ನೋಡ್ಬಿಟ್ರೆ ಆಚಾರ್ಯರು ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇರೋ ಉದಾಹರಣೆ ಆಗಿನ ಕಾಲದ ಬಹಳ ದೊಡ್ಡ ಕನ್ನಡಿಗಳಿದ್ದಾಗ ಅದ್ರ ಎದುರುಗಡೆ ಇರೋ ಚಿತ್ರ ಎಲ್ಲ ಕನ್ನಡಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರತಿಬಿಂಬಿತ ಆಗುತ್ತಲ್ಲ ಅದನ್ನ ಇಟ್ಕೊಂಡು ಮನಸ್ಸಲ್ಲಿ ಇಟ್ಕೊಂಡು ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ರು ಕನ್ನಡಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಕಾಣ್ತಕ್ಕಂತ ದೃಶ್ಯ ಅದು ನಿಮಗೆ ಸ್ಫುಟವಾಗಿ ಕಂಡ್ರು ಅದು ಸತ್ಯ ಅಲ್ಲ ಅಲ್ಲ ಅದು ಬರೀ ಪ್ರತಿಬಿಂಬ ಅಲ್ವಾ ಕನ್ನಡಿಲ್ ತೋರ್ತಾ ಇರೋದು ಸತ್ಯ ಅಲ್ಲ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತಿದೆ ಕನ್ನಡಿನಲ್ಲಿ ನಿಮಗೆ ಒಂದು ದುಡ್ಡಿನ ಕೈಲಿ ಕಂಡ್ರೆ ನೀವು ಕೈ ಹಾಕಿ ಕನ್ನಡಿಯಿಂದ ದುಡ್ಡನ್ನ ಎತ್ಕೊಳಕಾಗತ್ತ ಅನ್ನೋ ಭಾವ ಅದು ಸತ್ಯ ಅಲ್ಲ ಮಿಥ್ಯ ಹಾಗೆ ಆ ಉದಾಹರಣೆ ಕನ್ನಡಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ನೀವು ಪಟ್ಟಣಗಳ ನಕಾಶೆ ಅಥವಾ ಕಟ್ಟಡಗಳನ್ನು ನೋಡ್ಬಿಟ್ರೆ ಅದು ಕೇವಲ ಅಭಾಸ ಪ್ರತಿಬಿಂಬ ಮಿಥ್ಯ ನಿಜ ಅಲ್ಲ ಹಾಗೆ ನಾನು ಈ ದೇಹ ಅಲ್ಲ ನಾನು ಪರಮಾತ್ಮ ಸ್ವರೂಪನೇ ಆಗಿದ್ದೇನೆ ತತ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾಹಂ ಇತಿ ಜ್ಞಾತ್ವಾ ಕೃತಕೃತ್ಯೋ ಭವಿಷ್ಯಸಿ ಸೊ ಈ ಜಗತ್ತು ನನ್ನ ಕಾಣ್ತಾ ಇದೆಯಲ್ಲ ಕನ್ನಡಿಯ ಒಳಗೆ ಕಂಡ ಹಾಗೆ ಈ ಕಾಣ್ತಾ ಇರೋ ಜಗತ್ತು ನಿಜವಾಗ್ಲೂ ಶಾಶ್ವತ ಅಲ್ಲ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಕಾಣ್ತಕ್ಕಂತ ಸುಖ ಆನಂದ ಶಾಶ್ವತ ಅಲ್ಲ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ನಾನು ಅನುಭವಿಸ್ತಕ್ಕಂತ ದುಃಖ ಯಾವುದು ಶಾಶ್ವತ ಅಲ್ಲ ಇದು ಪ್ರತಿ ಕ್ಷಣದಲ್ಲೂ ಬದಲಾವಣೆ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇರತಕ್ಕಂತ ಜಗತ್ತು ಆದ್ದರಿಂದ ಕನ್ನಡಿಯ ಒಳಗೆ ಕಂಡಂತೆ ಈ ಜಗತ್ತು ನಿಜ ಅಲ್ಲ ಇದು ಸತ್ಯವಲ್ಲ ಮಿಥ್ಯಾ ಅಂತ ತಿಳಿದು ಈ ಜಗತ್ತಿನ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ನಿನ್ನ ಕಲ್ಪನೆಯನ್ನ ಬಿಟ್ಟು ತತ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾಹಂ ಇತಿ ಜ್ಞಾತ್ವಾ ಕೃತಕೃತ್ಯೋ ಭವಿಷ್ಯ ನಾನು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಸ್ವರೂಪನೇ ಆಗಿದ್ದೇನೆ ಅಂತ ನಿನಗೆ ಆ ಭಾವ ಬಲ್ಪ್ ಬಿಟ್ರೆ ಆ ಜ್ಞಾನೋದಯ ಆದರೆ ನೀನು ಕೃತಕೃತ್ಯನಾಗ್ತೀಯಪ್ಪ ಇನ್ನು ಮುಂದೆ ಜೀವನದಲ್ಲಿ ಮಾಡೋ ಅಂಥದ್ದು ಏನೂ ಇಲ್ಲ ನಿನ್ನ ಎಲ್ಲ ಕರ್ಮಗಳು ಇಲ್ಲಿಗೆ ನಿಶೇಷವಾಗಿ ಹೊರಟವು ಅಂತ ಆಚಾರ್ಯರು ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಸೇಸ್ ಇಯರ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಎತ್ರೈಶ ಜಗದಾಭಾಸೋ ದರ್ಪಣಾಂತ ಪುರಂ ಯಥ ತತ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾಹಂ ಇದೆ ಜ್ಞಾತ್ವಾ ಕೃತಕೃತ್ಯೋ ಭವಿಷ್ಯ ಸೊ ದಿ ಅಪಿಯರೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಎಂಟೈರ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ದ ಫಿಸಿಕಲ್ ಮ್ಯಾನಿಫೆಸ್ಟೇಷನ್ ಅರೌಂಡ್ ಅಸ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಜಗತ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ರಪಂಚ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕಾಸ್ಮಾಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದ ಇಮೇಜಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಮಿರರ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ಸ್ so the image in a mirror of any object appears real but it is only an image a reflection everyone knows that acharya is giving that example so just like you know that the reflection of an image in the mirror is false observe the entire universe and jagat and prapancha is false remember remember and experience yourself first time, that this is eternally changing not permanent this jagat is false mithya and always remember you are the brahma swarup so once you identify yourself correctly remain in that bhava sarvatma bhava i am brahma swarup then you become krutkartya that means you have achieved everything what is to be achieved in the human life the very goal the very purpose of the human life is to know your own reality our own reality is to be understood correctly so once you know that by first hand first hand experience aparoksha anubhuti then there is nothing more sadhana left nothing more for you to do in this life you become a brahma jnani yourself atma jnani yourself you become krutakrutya again that word acharya is using you become krutakrutya you have achieved the goal for which you are born the main purpose of this life itself is to achieve the goal of knowing actually my reality who really i am am i this body with a name with a status born to some parents living in the world am i this 
or I am, am I something different? So that that perception, once you derive internally by the grace of the Sadguru or God, then you become Krutakritya. That's what I can teach you. See, there is the subject matter is so vast about the Jagat, lot of things are lot of things are there. So as per the most of the dualistic school of thought, the people who believe in dualism, while trying to condemn monism, Advaita school of thought, they even start condemning the Advaitic Acharyas also, including Shankaracharya. Even he is being condemned. Why? The argument is how this world, what we are seeing and perceiving, experiencing is false. How the Jagat is false? It cannot be. You are wrong. Jagat cannot be Mithya. Mithya means false. You are sitting in front of me. I am sitting in front of you. Are you false? Are you not seeing me? I mean, am I not observable to you? So many animals, plants and everything. People are there around. Everything is there. Jagat is there. Prapancha is there. Is it false? So for Mithya, word used, a wrong perception is there in the minds of so many people. So Mithya means this is not permanent. This Jagat or Prapancha, Acharya calls Anirvachaniya. It is it's why he calls Mithya, because this is ever-changing, not permanent, ever-modifying, transforming. All the time it is born and it will die, born and die. So it is not a constant thing. The way the Brahma, Parabrahma Vastu, Supreme Consciousness, that unmanifest, that nirguna brahma, that is avikari, nishchala, aja, nitya, shashvata, no birth and no death. death. It remains in the same state all the time, whether in the past or present or future. It is beyond the time-space continuum. That real, that real, nirguna brahma, parabrahma vastu, Paramatma Vastu, that real, primordial, unmanifest, that is responsible for the entire creation. So that is Satya. Whereas the creation, which, is, which appears and disappears, is not Satya in that sense. It is Mithya. So, Acharya, that's why he says, Yatraisha Jagadabhaso Darpananta Purami. So, Remove this identification, your associ association with the Jagat or Prapancha or the universe or your associates that they are not permanent, they are Mithya. Always have the feeling that you are the Atma Swaru. That Brahmaham Iti Jnatva, he gives the injunction. Remember all the time that you are Brahma Swarupa, you are, you are not the body, you are that Parabrahma Surupa, you are that Parama Chaitanya, you are that Supreme Consciousness. You are that macrocosm. You are that substrate. You are that only. That is your reality. All the time, Acharya is hammering at the point. Point to point and point to point. You know, most of the shoka. Then, <clears throat> Yes, yet sat ye bhotam nijaropa matyam, chitatvayanandam aropa matriyam. Tadetya mitya vopo utsrujeta shailu shavat vesham vatta matmanaha. Yes, sat ye bhotam nijaropa matyam, chitatvayanandam aropa matriyam. Tadetya mitya vapu utsrujeta shailu shavat vesham upatamatmanaha. 
ಮುಂದಿನ ಶ್ಲೋಕದಲ್ಲಿ ಒಂದು ಬಹಳ ಪ್ರಸಿದ್ಧವಾದ ಉದಾಹರಣೆ ಕೊಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಆಚಾರಿ ಯಾವ ಉದಾಹರಣೆ ನಾಟಕದಲ್ಲಿ ವೇಷಧಾರಿಯ ಪಾತ್ರದ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಹಿಂದೆ ಎಷ್ಟೋ ಸಲ ಇದೇ ಉದಾಹರಣೆಯನ್ನು ಕೊಟ್ಟಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ನಾಟಕದಲ್ಲಿ ಒಬ್ಬ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿ ರಾವಣನ ಪಾತ್ರವನ್ನು ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ರೆ ಆ ರಾವಣನ ವೇಷಭೂಷ ರಾವಣನ ನಟನೆ ಹಾವಭಾವ ಆತನ ಭಂಗಿ ಆತನ ಮುಖ ಕಿರೀಟ ಕತ್ತಿ ಎಲ್ಲವೂ ಆತ ರಾವಣನ ಹಾಗೆ ಪಾತ್ರ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾಗ ರಾವಣನಾಗೆ ತೋರ್ತಾನೆ ಸಭಿಕರಿಗೆ ನೋಡೋರು ಆದರೆ ಆ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿಗೆ ತಾನು ರಾವಣ ಅಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಗೊತ್ತಿದೆ ತಾನು ನಾಟಕದಲ್ಲಿ ಕೇವಲ ರಾವಣನ ಪಾತ್ರ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೇನೆ ಅಂತ ಗೊತ್ತಿದೆ ನಾಟಕ ರಂಗದಲ್ಲಿ ಆತ ರಾವಣನ ತರಹ ನಟನೆ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾನೆ ಆವ ಭಾವಗಳು ತೋರಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾನೆ ಸೀತಾ ಮಾತೆಯನ್ನು ಎತ್ಕೊಂಡು ಹೋಗ್ತಾನೆ ಕೊನೆಗೆ ಶ್ರೀರಾಮಚಂದ್ರನಿಂದ ಹತನ ಆಗ್ತಾನೆ ಆದ್ರೆ ಆ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿ ಗೊತ್ತಿದೆ ನಾನು ರಾವಣ ಅಲ್ಲ ನಾನು ಒಬ್ಬ ನಾಟಕ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೇನೆ ಈ ವೇಷ ಹಾಕಿದ್ದೆ ಸದಾ ಕಾಲ ಆತ ತಾನು ಯಾರು ಅಂತ ಆತನಿಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತಿರುತ್ತೆ ಆದ್ರೆ ರಂಗದಲ್ಲಿ ಸಭಿಕರು ಎದುರಿಗೆ ಬಂದಾಗ ನಾಟಕದ ಪರದೆ ಎಳೆದಾಗ ಆತ ರಾವಣನಾಗಿ ಆಕ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದ ರಾವಣನಾಗಿ ತೋರ್ತೆ ನೋಡೋರಿಗೆ ಆತ ರಾವಣ ಆತನಿಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತಿದೆ ನಾನು ರಾವಣ ಅಲ್ಲ ಹಾಗೆ ಯಾವ ರೀತಿ ನಟ ಕೇವಲ ನಟನೆಗೋಸ್ಕರ ಒಂದು ವೇಷವನ್ನು ಹಾಕೊಂಡು ನಟನೆ ಮುಗಿದ ನಂತರ ವೇಷವನ್ನು ಕಳಿಸಿ ತನ್ನ ನಿಜ ರೂಪದಲ್ಲಿ ಇರ್ತಾನೋ ಹಾಗೆ ಅನ್ನು ಉದಾಹರಣೆ ಕೊಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದ ಶೈಲೂಷವತ್ ವೇಷಂ ಉಪತ್ತಮಾತ್ಮನ ತದ್ ಏತ್ಯ ಮಿಥ್ಯಾ ವಪು ಉತ್ಸೃಜಯಿತ ಅದೇ ರೀತಿ ಈ ಮಿಥ್ಯಾ ಸ್ವರೂಪವಾದ ಈ ದೇಹ ಇದೆಯಲ್ಲಪ್ಪ ನಾನು ನಾನು ಅಂತ ತಿಳ್ಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದೀಲ್ಲ ಇದನ್ನು ನೀನು ಬಿಟ್ಟಾಕು ಹೌದು ಈ ದೇಹ ಇದೆ ಆದ್ರೆ ಅದು ನೀನಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ತಿಳ್ಕೋ ನಾಟಕ ಇದು ನಾಟಕ ಅಂತ ತಿಳ್ಕೋ ಜಗತ್ ಆ ನಾಟಕದಲ್ಲಿ ನಿನ್ನ ದೇಹ ಇದೆ ನಿನ್ನ ದೇಹ ಪಾತ್ರ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಆದ್ರೆ ನಿಜವಾಗ್ಲೂ ನೀನು ಅದಲ್ಲ ತಿಳ್ಕೋ ಅಂತ ಆಚಾರ್ಯರು ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಯತ್ ಸತ್ಯಭೂತ ನಿಜ ರೂಪ ಮಾಧ್ಯಮ ಅದ್ವಯಾನಂದಂ ಅರೂಪಮತ್ಕ್ರಿಯಂ ಹಾಗಾರೆ ನೀನ್ ಯಾರಪ್ಪ ಆಚಾರ್ಯರು ಮೊದಲನೇ ಎರಡು ಚರಣ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ನೀನು ಸತ್ಯಭೂತನಾಗಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂತಹ ನಿಜ ರೂಪನಾಗಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂತಹ ಅನಾದಿಯಾಗಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂತಹ ಹುಟ್ಟು ಸಾವು ಇಲ್ಲದೆ ಇರ್ತಕ್ಕಂತಹ ಚಿತ್ ಸ್ವರೂಪನಾಗಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂತಹ ಅದ್ವಯಾನಂದ ರೂಪದಲ್ಲಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂತಹ ರೂಪವೇ ಇಲ್ಲದೆ ಇರ್ತಕ್ಕಂತಹ ಯಾವುದೇ ಕ್ರಿಯೆ ಇಲ್ಲದೆ ಇರ್ತಕ್ಕಂತಹ ಸಚಿದಾನಂದ ಸ್ವರೂಪನಾಗಿ ಧನ ಸ್ವರೂಪನಾಗಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂತಹ ಆತ್ಮನೇ ನೀನು ಹಾಗೆ ತಿಳ್ಕೊಳ್ಳು ಒಬ್ಬ ವೇಷಧಾರಿ ಯಾವ ರೀತಿ ನಾಟಕದಲ್ಲಿ ನಟನೆ ಮಾಡ್ತಾನೋ ಹಾಗೆ ನೀನು ಈ ದೇಹವನ್ನ ನಾನು ಅಂತ ತಿಳ್ಕೊಳ್ಳದೆ ನೀನು ನಾಟಕದಲ್ಲಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂತ ನಟನ ಹಾಗೆ ಜೀವನದಲ್ಲಿ ಇದ್ದು ಬಿಡಬೇಕು ನಿಜವಾದ ನೀನ್ ಯಾರು ಅಂತ ನಿನಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತಿರಬೇಕು ಈ ದೇಹ ಅನ್ನೋದೊಂದು ವೇಷ ಅಂತ ಗೊತ್ತಿರ್ಬೇಕು ನಿನಗೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಇತ್ತ ವಾಟ್ ಎ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಗಿವಿಂಗ್ ಹಿ ಯತ್ ಸತ್ಯಭೂತಂ ನಿಜ ರೂಪ ಮಾಧ್ಯಮ್ ಚಿತ್ ಚಿತ್ ಅದ್ವಯಾನಂದ ರೂಪಂ ಅರೂಪಂ ಅಕ್ರಿಯಂ ಯುವಾ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ತತ್ ಏತ್ಯ ತತ್ ಏತ್ಯ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಯುವರ್ ರಿಯಾಲಿಟಿ ಪ್ರೊಸೆಸ್ಡ್ ತದೇತ್ಯ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಟ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ದಟ್ ಸತ್ಯ ಸ್ವರೂಪ ಯು ಆರ್ ರಿಯಲಿ ದಟ್ ನಿಜ ಸ್ವರೂಪ ಯು ಆರ್ ದಟ್ ಆನಂದ ಸ್ವರೂಪ ಯು ಆರ್ ದಟ್ ಪ್ರೈಮಾರ್ಡಿಯಲ್ ಸನಾತನ ಅವ್ಯಕ್ತ ಯು ಆರ್ ದಟ್ ಅನ್ಮ್ಯಾನಿಫೆಸ್ಟ್ ಪ್ರೈಮಾರ್ಡಿಯಲ್ ಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಸ್ತು ಯು ಆರ್ ದಟ್ ಚಿತ್ ಸ್ವರೂಪ ಯು ಆರ್ ದಟ್ ಅದ್ವಯಾನಂದ ಸ್ವರೂಪ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ದ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಒನ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಅದ್ವಿತೀಯ ಯು ಆರ್ ಆನಂದ ಸ್ವರೂಪ ಯು ಆರ್ ಅರೂಪಂ ಅಕ್ರಿಯಂ ಯು ಆರ್ ನೇಮ್ಲೆಸ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಫೇಸ್ಲೆಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ನೋ ಐಡೆಂಟಿಟಿ ಅಕ್ರಿಯಂ ಯು ಆರ್ ಮೋಷನ್ಲೆಸ್ ಯು ಆರ್
mitya vapu vapu means body sharira we give up the fast just like just like chailu shavat vesham upatta matmana just like acharya is giving the famous example of the dramas in those days thousand years before there were no tv and uh, films as you we can see nowadays so only dramas used to be there as the source of entertainment for the people for the audience so he is taking that famous example of the drama acharya says elsewhere he has given the same example see if a person is enacting a role of ravana in a drama on ramayana once he dons the makeup and all the dress defeating the king ravana and enters the stage how he behaves how he talks just like ravana himself the typical asura character rakshasa character demonic character of ravana he exhibits with full gusto and people will sometimes clap also for the, the, the wonderful acting he is showing but all the time the person who is enacting the ravana role knows that he is not a ravana he is only enacting the role of ravana on the stage for the sake of the audience so he knows that very well after the drama is over he will remove the makeup he will remove the dress of ravana he will wear his normal dress and he will go back as a normal person so no more he is ravana while acting also later also it was pure acting so acharya hints here how a jnani remains in the world the world of maya jagat which is mithya so our gurudev has beautifully explained this point you know at some context a jnani knows very well that he is surrounded by the jagat or samsara full of maya he has awakened from the pals a dream called jagat he has awakened himself but still he is surrounded by the maya jagat all the time till his body is sustained according to prarabdha till the death occurs to the body so he is around surrounded by the maya or the jagat people but at the same time he knows there is only one brahma padartha and he is that brahma padartha everywhere only brahma is seen brahma is pervading as adishtha so he is always sarvatma bhava he is in the brahma bhava all the time so our gurudev used to tell this point so beautifully a jnani no doubt will see no doubt will talk with his lips and the tongue no doubt he will hear with his ears no doubt he will touch no doubt he will smell and no doubt he will do actions perform karmas but the difference is an awakened mahapurusha a paramajnani a brahmajnani or atmajnani how he behaves he will be experiencing simultaneously the brahma padartha everywhere and he is nothing but the same brahma padartha the same inside and outside that is pervading everywhere and it is exhibiting itself in the form of the universe in the form of stavara and jangama in the form of moving and non moving objects in the form of animals and plants in the form of living and non living animate and inanimate thing so he will be experiencing both so he is no more affected by the maya or the delusion of this world called jagat so that's how beautifully he gave a sermon on this jagat so it is very difficult for normal people to understand what a jnani thinks and jnani says a parama jnani behave that's why behavior of a jnani nature of a jnani cannot be understood by a common mortal person because no two janis are equal in their behavior in their observing rituals or any any traditions or whatever you call 
the way of their life is totally different. Totally different. Very unassuming sometimes. Very demanding sometimes. So you cannot quantify, you cannot codify. There are no rules, set rules for a jnani, how to behave, how not to behave. So these are the points we have to remember. So ultimately the point here is, Acharya says, you be an actor in the life. Just like the person who is enacting the role of Ravana all the time knows that he is not a Ravana himself. He is an individual by his own name and status. You be an actor in the life itself. Be an actor. Always focus inside onto the locus of Brahmapada. You are that Atma Suru. So let your mind be focused on the locus of Atma, Pratyagat, inside. But outside, you be a perfect actor. Do all your duty, do all your karma selflessly with a devotion, with a shraddha, like any other person. Service to the mankind, service to the humanity, service in the samsara, everything should be done. All the duties have to be performed very diligently and correctly, our Gurudev used to say. But inside, always remember, be an actor, very good actor, very good actor. Dissociate yourself. This is how he used to teach. This is how he used to show. This is how he used to advise. Great, our Guru. So with Guru Sankalpa, we are stopping today. <coughs> At the Shloka number 291, we are stopping today. That is Adhyasa. Prakarana is over. Sri Rama, Jaya Rama, Jaya Jaya Rama. Sri Rama, Jaya Rama, Jaya Jaya Rama. Sri Rama Jaya Rama Jaya Jaya Rama Sri Rama Jaya Rama Jaya Jaya Rama Hari Om Tat Om Namo Bhagavate Virageshwara Hari Om sir Hari Om Thank you so much for this again <laughs> Hari Om